Hi, I'm Prentice. I'm making this video because I found some research interesting that I want to share. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of people that are actually going to see this, maybe like three, but I don't know. I just did some research and I found it interesting. Just a little about myself. I really like writing. Um, I really like writing fantasy fiction in particular. So because of that, I do a lot of research on past cultures because a lot of fantasy fiction takes place in like a weird version of the Dark Ages. There's some version of history, but add just a bunch of magic. So that's why I do a lot of research in that regard. So I was writing this story that would take place in a version of Rome. I was in my library and I was walking down the Roman section. There's just aisles and aisles about Rome because the library I go to is part of a big university college. So there's just so many different books about Rome. It's kind of ridiculous. But anyways, I was walking down one of the aisles and out of the corner of my eye, I spotted this book about Roman bathhouses. The exact book title was Bathing in Public in the Roman World. It wasn't that big of a book. It was like, you know, that big. It, was like, it looked like the size of a small novel rather than a research book. And I was just interested, like, why would someone write an entire book based off of Roman bathhouses? So naturally, I read the whole thing. <laughs> and I learned some pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to share this stuff with you because I am such a generous soul. Also, I have no one to share this with beyond, like, the two friends I have. So. <laughs> and if you happen to be a weirdo like me that finds this stuff interesting, um, I'm going to put the book title and author and all that stuff in the description. So feel free to look it up and read that whole book and have people silently judge you if you tell them. After recording a lot of this, I realized that this video is getting pretty long, so I'm also going to provide links in the description so you can go to certain parts in the video that may interest you more than other parts. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. So here we go. Um, I actually kind of lied to you a little bit. This book isn't about bathhouses, like the actual structure. I mean, there's a little description about the structure, um, but it's more about the social construct around bathhouses. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let's start with the basics. The first thing that's really talked about is bathing ritual and the general construction of these bathhouses. Um, there's a specific way you need to bathe. There's certain rooms in a particular order you go in. Um, and yeah, these bathhouses are just like a labyrinth of rooms. The general ritual consists of, you know, removing your clothes and then you exercise to work up a sweat. They usually do this by like playing ball games. I don't know exactly what that entails because they didn't really describe it that much in the book, but basically they work up a sweat first. And then they go through a se series of heated rooms that are heated or cooled to specific temperatures. The standard pathway is warm room, and then they go into the hot room, and then another medium heat warm room again, and then the cool room. Somewhere in the medium heat room, they get their skin scraped by these specific utensils to try to get like the dirt and grime off you, which it's actually very disgusting if you think about it because they didn't really have places to dispose of this dirt and grime. So this room was, the floors were just covered in dead skin and it, oh God. Well, anyways, after all the rooms are done, they dry off and the rich people anoint themselves with oils and they put on clean clothing and go home. And this was actually a quick bath. Like, even the quick baths take serious amount of time. Like, this thing is an event. You can't just go in there and, like, dunk into one of the baths and get out. If you didn't already know this, um, Roman bathing houses were public bathing houses. There was no such thing as a private bath, really. Like, even in houses that had baths, they were made big enough so the whole family could bathe together. It was really weird. 
you know, I shouldn't say that it was really weird because, you know, culture changes. So back in the day, it was acceptable. Right now, like, I think that's really weird because I don't want to see my parents, you know, not wearing clothes ever. But back then, it was perfectly fine. So I guess who am I to judge, right? <laughs> but let's get into the meat of this book. Like I said, it's more about the social constructs surrounding the bathhouses rather than the actual bathhouses themselves. So there were a lot of fun, quirky tidbits that I learned about. For example, they treated bathhouses kind of like trendy restaurants. If a new bathhouse was being constructed and it opens, everyone flocks to that bathhouse. Like everyone wants to go to that bathhouse because it has like that certain cool thing that the other one doesn't. So <laughs> it's like people would change their bathhouses to be cool or whatever. You would actually be judged if you bathed at a bad bathhouse. It's really weird. It's like a cool kid mentality. But Prentice, how will they be able to judge me? How will they know where I bathe? They will ask you. It was incredibly common to ask someone what bathing house they went to. It was as socially acceptable as it is to ask someone what their job is or where they go to school. The reason for this is because even though we see bath bathing as something that should be private, in Rome it was really a social event. Um, everyone got off work at 12 and there was an hour or two between the time they got off work and the big meal of the day. Most people would go to the bathhouse at that same time, so oftentimes they'd all go together. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't know many friends of mine who would really want to take a bath with me. Like, I have some pretty close friends, and we do a lot of stuff together, but I'm pretty sure that's where they draw the line. That being said, this isn't necessarily uncommon in the modern world. There are still places that have public bathhouses, such as Japan, and there's really no problem with it. It's just a culture difference. What is unique is the dinner invitations. Because the bath time was between when work got off and the big meal of the day, oftentimes people would meet up there to go to dinner after bathing. <laughs> And this created an interesting problem. We'll call it the invitation pesterer. Sometimes there'll be people at the bathhouse that will continuously pester people who they know have dinner parties quite often. So they would go to the bathhouse and be overly nice to a certain person to try to, you know, guilt trip them into going to their house for dinner parties. It's actually kind of hilarious. Another thing that's interesting is, despite the hierarchical nature of Roman society, all like different classes all bathe together in the same bathhouse. So if you look at it from an outside perspective, it's like, oh, it's nice. This is like maybe a quick break from all that social hierarchy crap. Like everyone bathes together and has a fun time. <laughs> no, yeah, no. The, the hierarchy is still in place, I assure you. Like I mentioned before, um, bathing wasn't really considered to be a private thing in Roman society. So as a result, the interactions they had in the bathhouse are similar to what you'd see in, you know, the town square. So the rich people would show up with slaves protecting their things and they would walk around and talk with fellow elites and kind of scoff at the more poor people in the bath. So despite the fact they were all sharing the same space, they definitely didn't interact with one another as equals. Did I say slaves? Oh yes, the rich people had slaves and they had slaves protecting their things when they took a bath. What a sad thing if your entire job description is to watch someone's stuff while they're taking a bath. But that is the job description some people had. And for good reason. Stealing was extremely common. And mainly because there was like very few ways to keep it from happening. <laughs> when someone's things got stolen, they didn't really have a good way to find the culprit. So what they'd do is they'd write curse tablets. Curse tablets were used to call supernatural assistance to, you know, punish the perpetrator. No, I'm not making this up. <laughs> God, isn't history fun? <laughs> Needless to say, those curse tablets aren't particularly effective, so more people find it beneficial to either show up to the bathhouse with not as many things, which is actually really hard to do because, like I said, just about everyone shows up after work, 
or to have someone come with you and watch your stuff. Now, we pretty much covered the social aspects I want to talk about. There's a lot more in the book, so if you want to find out more about bathhouses, I highly recommend looking at it. But now I want to kind of go across the hygienics of uh, the bathhouse. The bathhouses were disgusting. Don't get me wrong. Like, a bathhouse is better than no bathhouse. I mean, they were in the habit of bathing every day, which is good. Um, so I'm going to give them credit where credit's due because there were a lot of other cultures during the time that did not bathe at all. So I'll give them that credit. That being said, these bathhouses were still filthy. Now, Rome has these wonderful aqueducts that bring in this really good drinking water, but they wanted to conserve that water for exactly that, drinking. So these bathhouses, their water actually came from runoff water. So the water was often muddy after rain, had all these different particles in it. And that's before anyone even touches the water. I'm not even talking about the whole hygienic issue with a shared bath. In the book, there were actually accounts of different medical people cautioning Romans to not take baths when they had open wounds for fear of getting gangrene. That's how gross this water was. What I find most concerning is similar to Western culture, um, in Rome, water was seen as cleansing. You know, if you take a bath, it makes you feel better. It improves health. But the flip side of that is a lot of people would take a lot of baths when they were sick. And because it's a shared space, that would lead to the spread of disease, you know, spread of any form of sickness. So if you went to a public bath, you were a lot more likely to get sick. And back in that day, you know, being sick was a lot more dangerous in that time. Once again, I would like to emphasize my critiques of public bathing are specific to the ancient Roman bathhouse. Current versions of public baths are far more improved than these ancient times, so I don't think that it's really dangerous or unclean to go to a public bath nowadays. It's just these particular ones back in the day were pretty bad. I have a lot more notes from this book, and I have a lot more things I could cover, but this video is already getting pretty long, and I think I covered the main things I found interesting, so I think I'm going to end it here. So what do you think? Feel free to leave a comment or tell me I'm wrong or leave a critique or what, whatever you want. I, You know, three people that are out there. <laughs> All right, well... See you around. Have a wonderful day and be sure to tell someone a horrible pun. Actually, tell me a horrible pun. I love puns. So if you have any good puns or just really bad puns, let me know. Prentice out.